What are the first results? What did doctors say? Is there something interesting you could share with us? There are so many results. They will be in process. They will be processed for a long time. We'll find out later. What we know now is that uh, our mission was success, that everybody is happy. I think Sergei would agree and Scott too. We confirm. How are you feeling? What are your feelings? How do you feel after the space flight? As usual, as always, after the space flight, a bit heavy, a bit difficult. But it's uh, regular. I'm nearly back to normal. Getting ready. Well, it's uh, after every flight, it's uh, a real privilege to come back and see the people that uh, made it possible. So that's why we're here to, to celebrate not our achievement, but the an achievement of everyone that worked on it. yet. Kelly Expedition 46 International Space Station Commander and member of the one-year crew along with Mikhail Kornienko. What does it mean to you personally to return to Russia to be reunited with your one-year crew member and to receive the honors that have been associated with the completion of your record-breaking mission? Uh, it means a few things. Um, you know, first of all, uh, since I'm leaving NASA here pretty soon, this might be the last time for me to come back to Russia, a country which I love and the people, I have great friends here and have spent um, you know, many years here, almost uh, actually more than a, a decade and a half. So it's, uh, you know, it's sad in that respect. I definitely will try to get back as much as possible, but not nearly as much as I was coming here as a crew member training for all these uh, years. Um, and then it was great to see Misha who I've spent so much time with in space and see how he's doing, which is, is great. And my, uh, my other crew members on board, uh, I saw Sergei Volkov the first night I was here, and then uh, I saw, also saw Gennady Padalka and Anton Skaplarov. So, you know, just seeing them and other, other friends has really made it a, a great trip so far. Overall, how, how significant was the one-year mission, and in, in, in retrospect, in, in bringing us closer overall to our journey to Mars? Going to Mars is a bunch of baby steps. And, uh, you know, it started off with the first uh, 
human in space, Yuri Gagarin. And uh, this mission with Misha and I and all the people that put it together, not only my fellow crew member mates on board, but all, all the people on the ground, is another one of those steps. And, um, and uh, sometime in the future, all these small steps will lead to people putting their, their feet on Mars in the name of science, exploration, and discovery. And I'm proud to be one small part of that. It's been a bit of a whirlwind in the three weeks that have passed since your landing. Have, have you had time to absorb the magnitude of your accomplishment and the impact it's had worldwide on the, on the public's perception of human spaceflight and of the International Space Station? I have had very little time to do anything, actually. I uh, got back to Houston and jumped in with both feet into my pool in my backyard and I guess that's somewhat of a metaphor for jumping right back into life. Um, and it's been uh, very, very busy. A lot of debriefs and medical tests. Um, so on one hand, I you know, haven't had time to, to really come to grips with the magnitude and the duration that, that we were gone and just the, uh, the incredible effort it takes to fly any flight to the space station no less a flight of a, uh, a year. So um, I hope in the next several weeks or months, I will have a little bit of more time to kind of decompress and consider you know, what this flight has meant to me. And I am getting a sense for, for what it meant to other people. I was kind of you know, somewhat, I uh, wouldn't say shocked. It was somewhat a little overwhelming, I guess, to see how many people were really following along and interested. And I had a sense for that when I was on board, but not nearly uh, the sense I got for the, uh, the public interest once, once I had gotten back. So it's great to see that. And I think, uh, you know, over time I'll be able to, as I think about it and, um, you know, contemplate the meaning of this mission, I'll, I'll really appreciate the, uh, the public's involvement in this more too. Scott, you're going to be leaving NASA soon to pursue future opportunities in your life. And you've said all along that you'd never be far from space flight. Looking back at your incredible career, and most recently the one-year mission, how do you feel that your contribution has opened the doors for others, for the future generations to follow in pursuing human exploration of space? A couple things in, in that question. Um, I am uh, going to be leaving the civil service, but I still will be working with NASA as a uh, human research test subject, kind of like what my brother was doing the whole time I was in space. He wasn't a, a NASA civil servant all this time. He was, you know, just almost like a volunteer. Uh, there's still a lot of data to collect on me and, and him, and we'll both continue to do that. I'll also continue to do the debriefs um, about my mission. Once I've uh, uh, left the civil service, I'll just do that with a retired astronaut badge. And by my, my, me leaving, it allows me the freedom to do a lot of other things. One of those is to continue to be an advocate for human spaceflight, but do it in a way where I have more time on my hands, uh, more freedom, and therefore, in my opinion, the, the ability to even do a better job than I, I currently can do now. Um, the other uh, a part of your question is about, you know, how can I... Uh, motivate or um, be an example for the other astronauts or future astronauts that will come behind me um, to, you know, for them to achieve their goals. Um, in my life, I have never turned down a hard job. I may have not have liked it. I may have thought of other options for other people to do it, but in the end, I would never say yes or, or would never say no to something I should deep down think I should say yes to that because it is hard. And, you know, when we do things that are really hard, we can achieve great things. And I think, you know, as that has worked as a great model for me. There are many times when people ask me to do something, as an example, be the backup to a space station crew where there was no flight associated with it. I didn't want to do it, uh, didn't seem to make sense, but I was asked to, so I 
put my head down and marched smartly and spent a couple of years training for a space flight that had no flight. Um, but, you know, because I did that, that was recognized as, uh, you know, a, a major sacrifice. And, you know, later on that led to something else, which led to something else. So it was kinda, it's kind of almost been the model of my career to, to never, never say no to things. And I think that's why now, 20 years later, I have had a significant amount of experience and opportunity. Um, you know, I'm not the, I don't consider myself the most uh, capable astronaut, but I've certainly had a lot of opportunities and a lot of great experiences. And I would encourage those that come behind me to just have an open mind to doing things, the hard things, even if they might not think they're the right things at first. And lastly, over the course of your career, you've worked with many other astronauts uh, in space on your missions, both um, on the shuttle and on the International Space Station. But Mikhail Kornienko, your one-year crew member, talk about that relationship a bit and how are you going to move forward in keeping in touch with Mikhail over the incredible bond that you had in your year in space? My brother from another mother, my space brother. Um, I plan, I will be friends with him for the rest of my life. Um, he's a great guy, a really um, kind of a down to earth, kind of earthy, you know, walk with your bare feet through the grass kind of guy. And I enjoyed immensely him being up there. He did a great job. Always had a positive a positive attitude. It was great that we could, uh, you know, share this experience together, the highs and the lows, and you know, have each other to lean on. Um, and it was great that this was done in an in an international way. I think it really, you know, drives home the importance of the space station program as a place of international cooperation in something that is incredibly, incredibly difficult and how this international partnership makes us stronger at doing the hard things. Mikhail Kornienko, flight engineers of expeditions 43 through 46 on the International Space Station and of course a member of the historic one-year mission along with Scott Kelly. Looking back at the one-year mission, how significant was this accomplishment for you personally and to bring human space flight back into the spotlight once again? Насколько важно сейчас, когда вы оглядываетесь на ваш годовой полёт, сам полёт оказался для вас лично, и насколько важно было вернуть общественный интерес вообще к исследованиям космоса? Ну, наверное, не столько важно, насколько я бы не акцентировался на мне как на персоне, насколько важно это для меня, хотя это важно, конечно. Я бы хотел поставить акцент, насколько важно это для будущего пилотируя космонавтики. I think it is most important not to draw attention here to my achievement, to my personal achievement here, but it is most important to reiterate the fact how important this flight was for the future ex joint exploration of space. Ну, наверное, это не секрет, что наш полет позиционировался как э, полет на Марс в пределах Солнечной системы. И мы со Скоттом э, вот сделали первый шаг к этому полету э, в плане медико-биологических исследований. Это очень важно. I guess it's an open secret that our flight, our one-year mission, was presented as a mini Mars mission as well. And I think myself and Scott managed to imitate this flight and uh, have uh, all the important studies in terms of biomedical support of such missions. What are some of the most significant results of spending a, an entire year in space? And are you ready to get back in line for another assignment soon? Ну, какие для вас наиболее важные uh, события произошли в полете, и готовы ли вы сразу вернуться в строй и быть назначенным на следующие полеты? Ну, то, что касается полета, наверное, 
конечно, каждое событие важно. Это прибытие кораблей, это грузовики, это э, пилотируемые миссии, которые к нам приходили. Это новые экспедиции, новые люди. Конечно, это ИВЕЙ, это, это важно. То есть много событий, которые важны в полете. During the mission, naturally, there were some highlights. Most likely, uh, most importantly, those were arrival of uh, manned spaceships uh, as well as cargo, sp cargo spaceships. And uh, EVAs, of course, were the highlight of the mission as well. Ну, то, что касается моего участия в дальнейших экспедициях, я могу сказать, что по сравнению с предыдущим моим состоянием после посадки, я чувствую сейчас, как это ни странно, себя гораздо лучше. Наверное, сказывается опыт, и через некоторое время я буду готов стать вновь в строй. As to future assignments, ironically, I think I feel better after this one year mission than after my previous flight, most likely due to the experience and exposure that I've experienced as well. So I think in the short term, I should be ready for another assignment. How do you feel about being reunited with Scott Kelly after your mission? And how are you going to stay in touch after such an incredible experience together on board the International Space Station? Насколько важно для вас было снова встретиться со Скоттом? Какие чувства вы испытываете? И как вы будете поддерживать связь в дальнейшем? Вот это очень важно, наверное, да, что мы работали весь год душа в душу. И он мне позвонил, ну, дня три после посадки, спросил, Миш, как ты себя чувствуешь? Я ему звонил, но не дозвонился. Мы друг на встречу друг звонили. Это важно. Мы, мы друзья, мы сотрудничаем. Это пример для э, сотрудничества для наших стран, для вообще в принципе для, для всех, как мы вели работу на борту станции. И мы, мы друзья, и мы останемся друзьями. Yes, I think this is the, the most important actually about our mission that uh, we uh, worked the whole mission together with no issues whatsoever. And uh, Scott called me about our on about third day after landing. I tried calling him, so we pretty much were calling each other at the same time. So I think it's a good sign. And uh, we continue, we're friends, we're great colleagues. We'll definitely stay in touch and continue uh, our communication. And I think this is the most important value uh, of our mission as well, that and the example that we set as a team of two working together for such a long time. How do you see the future of human space flight, particularly in terms of the joint cooperation that the International Space Station provides that will help lead humankind further down the road toward deep, exp deep space exploration? Эксплуатирование Международной космической станции и те возможности, которые она предоставляет, как вы видите дальнейшее ее использование в, для исследований дальнего космоса? МКС – это великолепная лаборатория, которая создана усилиями, ну, наверное, всего человечества, да, всех инженеров развитых стран. Это Прекрасный пример кооперации. И по решению глав этих стран она будет эксплуатироваться до 2024 года. И это будет прекрасный задел для освоения Солнечной системы. The International Space Station is a beautiful and excellent laboratory for use of all the nations that put the effort to build it. And these are many, many countries and the brightest engineers that represent these countries all around the world. And we know that uh, the governments of the countries who contributed decided to use the station up till 2024. And I'm sure that it will be used and continuously used for further exploration to go uh, study the solar system.